Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is Enoch singer-songwriter Alyssa P. The Juno award-winning musician was born and raised in Salyut, a small village in Nunavik. Alyssa P. recently released her own rendition of Blondie's Heart of Glass, sung in Anuktitut, a version that won the praises of even Debbie Harry herself. It's the lead single off an upcoming album of covers. Alyssa P., thanks so much for doing the show this week. Knuckle make, thanks. Uh, congrats on everything you have going on. As we were saying, a uh, busy time for you. Uh, maybe let's start with that latest single, though, uh, cover of Blondie's Heart of Glass. But not just any cover. Your rendition is, a song, is sung in Inuktitut. Uh, what made you want to cover Heart of Glass? Oh, my, my. I've always wanted to cover, actually, a few artists that I love. I mean, when I think about Willie Thrasher, whose, whose songs I've covered, actually, a song called Four Fathers, a song called Wolves Don't Live by the Rules. Um, I mean, I like to write my songs, but sometimes I think it's also nice to get to visit uh, the past through song. Um, so Blondie is definitely one of my foremost, my most beautiful memories as a kid when we would go to Iwuyivik, a small town near my village uh, where my family is from, actually where my name Elisapi is from, uh, by my late, um, my mother's uh, aunt Elisapi Hopanok, Elisapi Mark, so yeah, I just I mean, Blondie's song, um, Heart of Glass, every time I hear it, I'm straight back to that dance floor in a small dance hall with all my cousins, family, you know, kids from the village. Uh, every time that song would come on, it's like everyone would just swirl and just, you know, they're dancing and, and I, I was very small, so my memory is feeling really small, but yet being you know, taken like into this beautiful, fun, colorful space where everybody's dancing and they're beautiful, they look so free. So yeah, I think that's how I kind of wanted to, you know, I kind of wanted to revisit those times and those memories because I think it's really important uh, when you cover a song to really take people to why you 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 love that song if it's not your song so and making it in Inuktitut I think it's even more special because you know when I think about elders who didn't speak or understand English um, when they hear this song all of a sudden they, they're gonna know the memory they're gonna have the, the melody in their you know in their memories and of course I think a lot of people know Blondie uh, but just listening to the words, finally, um, for me, you know, having that vision of elders finally understanding why their kids love to dance to this song so much is, I don't know, it's pretty exciting. I like, I like that idea. Uh, me too. Uh, shout out to Willie too, who we had on the show last year, a real treasure that he is. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the, the translation from English to Inuktitut and, and that process? Um, like I said, I think when music is so profound, is a song is so close to you, I think uh, it becomes a lot easier to translate it. Um, when a song is a little it's fun, but it's not close to the heart. I think it, it could be very complicated because, of course, our language, Inuktitut, is um, it's very practical. The way we, we describe, the way we use that language as to, for example, in French, it's very poetic. Everything is, uh, it, it all has to be this kind of imaginary, um, worlds as to Inuktitut is not quite like that, but it was very beautiful to be able to translate this song. It wasn't easy. Uh, I had an amazing translator who is a really amazing Inuktitut speaking woman from Khoktaq, uh, Sarah Alaba, who was there to 
once in a while just to go through uh, to make sure that, it, that it's flowing the way it should, that I'm, I'm using a term that I have to use. So for sure I had to make sure, I'm, although I'm an I'm a, I'm a Inuktitut speaking person, it was still important to make sure that you know I respect the little flowy things or certain terms that we don't really use before and after. Anyway, it was it was a bit complicated. It was okay. I'm not gonna say it was easy, but it was definitely more natural when the song you feel like it's totally yours. So for me, Blondie is yeah, it's it's almost like an Inu Inu Inuktitut song. It's like almost like an Inuit music. Uh, well, your rendition, as we mentioned, has garnered a, a lot of attention. Uh, Debbie Harry herself uh, tweeted her love for it. Uh, is it getting the type of reaction you were hoping for? Oh my goodness, getting the reaction I was hoping for. I had want people to hear it and to be moved by it like I was, because we did a, re re a, a version that's very personal to me. Um, trying to make it dancey wasn't going to be the right way because I think when we want to revisit a song it's also fun to really take it to, a spe to that special place that's in your heart. So although it's very dancey there's a little bit of, um, I don't know, there, there were tears for sure making this song, uh, recording it, there was definitely tears because I also was, I guess, wanting to visit, revisit the North in the 80s um, when things were so new, everything was so fresh, but yet uh, there's some innocence in there. Um, so yeah, the reaction was, I mean, it's crazy. It's been viewed so many times already on, on YouTube because there's also video that comes with it. Um, so it's definitely uh, much bigger than I expected. I just wanted to make sure that Inuit got it and they received it and they also uh, felt something precious about that song. So for sure Blondie shared it. <laughs> they, they said they loved it and Debbie Harry wrote to me personal message to me that was more than I asked for. I mean that was so nice of them also to be to take the time to reply because you know they're busy they're pretty, you know, they didn't have to necessarily, but they took, they took the time to listen to it. And, and I think a lot of people here are really moved by the song. That's, that's how I feel. Even people wrote to me, um, a woman who has, I think she's from the area in Montreal area, and she was saying how this song was able to be like her sister talking to her because she really loved the song with her sister who just passed away from breast cancer and she also suffered from, uh, she recovered from uh, breast cancer. Uh, she had to cut ties with her father who's, you know, toxic person. So she, she told me all these very heavy duty things but she said this song is kind of like a friend to me and it, it reassures me, it makes me emotional but it gives me like this beautiful contact you know, with my sister to say, let's be strong. So I'm like, it's it's beyond, for sure, beyond. Mm -hmm. You made uh, mention of the video which uses archival footage. Uh, can you talk about the, uh, the meaning of the video for the song for you? This video, I think it was also important to, to get um, people to listen to the music because it's nowadays as a musician, as an artist, we all know that it's really, really complicated and it takes a lot of uh, imagination to try to get your music out there, even more now. I mean, uh, I still buy, you know, I still have CDs, mm -hmm. but we're not into buying CDs anymore. It's all online, it's Spotify and all this. So I think it was important for, for me anyway, as, also as a, as someone who's in film, um, uh, images, um, films, um, to, to capture with our eyes, it's so, it's so fun for me to do so. We were able to get some old footage from uh, Avatar Cultural Institute that is uh, there for Inuit um, 
who there's amazing archival footages, uh, um, everything from artwork to audio. So this is the place where I love to go uh, to 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 make sure you know my music captures also through image. So we get to see Inuit back in the definitely more like early 60s where we were pretty much semi-nomad um, so yeah that's what I wanted to use it's black and white footage of Inuit just living smiling uh, feeling it, it, it's very simple you know there's no nothing complicated in what we see and I thought it was so beautiful to get to see Blondie with those images Awesome stuff. Uh, let's be more to talk about here. We just have to step aside for a quick break and then we'll continue the conversation here with the Juno winner, Polaris Prize nominated Alyssa P. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is Enoch singer songwriter Alyssa P. And uh, it's been a big month for you with the release of the Heart of Glass rendition. Your face uh, was on a billboard in Toronto's Dundas Square, and you teamed up with Spotify to curate the Indigenous playlist. Uh, can you tell us how that partnership came to be? Wow, I mean, uh, being asked to, to make a Spotify playlist is quite quite the job, if, if you think about it, because there are so many amazing ind indigenous artists that I would have loved to introduce, uh, to talk about. But yeah, every month uh, Spotify asks uh, indigenous uh, artists to, to curate, to to come up with their own playlist, so that was such a privilege. Um, and this time around, I really wanted to to get really specific on a certain uh, the part of the territory. Um, I really take us to the north, uh, to, to the Arctic, not only Canadian Arctic, of course, not just to Inuit, but also uh, starting from Mongolia to Siberia, Alaska, of course, Canada, um, Greenland. And even North uh, Norway, uh, with where the Sami people are, so I really kind of wanted to stick in those in those pole in that pole in the northern pole uh, because um, it was fun for me to really take people on this road trip on this journey uh, because a lot of ancient sounds uh, when you think about Mongolia. Uh, with their throat singing, with the way they use their instruments, that almost feels like you know Asian sounds, uh, indigenous sounds at the same time. And then you go to uh, Siberia, uh, so many various uh, different uh, tribes or different um, uh, indigenous groups. Uh, it's so vast if you think about the North. And of course, going to Alaska and then going to throat singing, um, you know, from on a storytelling through song, through melody. And then again, there's a very strong contemporary uh, sounds uh, that come from also Inuit artists. Um, and going all the way to Greenland was wow. It was it was a dream to do this because also there's hip hop. There's very edgy sounds also that almost like punk that almost you know rock and roll if you think about my uncle's group uh, that I wanted to also highlight a song they recorded in the 70s from Northern Haze uh, you know almost heavy metal sounds I mean it's it's it, I had so much fun doing that and it everything fits everything just went together yeah Elizabeth, who are some of the artists, uh, some of the music that has influenced you in your lifetime? Oh my, so many, so many amazing artists that have been, you know, my guides. Uh, of course, when I heard Susan Agluka for the first time, my life pretty much changed. I literally fell off my chair. It was so amazing because I, you know, I used to listen to you know, older, um, more male uh, artists who I love and I still love, like uh, William Taguna, um, my uncle's band, Salud Band, Willie Thrasher. There were all these amazing 
artist. And then when I heard and I got the CD of Susan and Luca for the first time, a cassette actually, um, everything changed for me. That's when I was like, oh my goodness, I can maybe start thinking of maybe a young girl from a small town, an uh, Enoch girl can actually make a record and put it out there. So I owe a lot to Susan. I think we owe a lot to Susan. Uh, of course, there were Itulu and uh, Susan and Nimio. Um, so many, many amazing artists. Uh, Willie Thrasher, of course. Um, yeah, and then I've got, I've had the chance to travel to Alaska, Siberia, Greenland, Norway. So that's why I also wanted to really take people on these places where you know they weren't necessarily able to go. For example, a Sami artist called Marie Boyne is uh, an amazing singer-songwriter who's very, she's kind of like a Buffy St. Marie of the Sami people. And of course, Buffy has been She's definitely my queen, for sure. Uh, you won a Juno in 2005. Uh, how much do you think the music industry has changed in the last 20 years? Mm. It's been amazing to see artists like Jeremy Dutcher, uh, Tribe Called Red. Um, of course, Tanya has paced the way to some very fearless artists and I think it's important to mention that um, because we are fearless people and I think we have our place in the industry, music industry um, and I think our languages also have a place so I think things are changing very quickly and I think people are more and more curious and realizing that they have been um, they have been missing out, you know, not knowing indigenous people more. So I think we are, I think we were like people who were pretty much starving and finally when we finally get to eat, we, we were, were feeding. It's the same thing for me when I, when I listen to artists, when I see art, uh, indigenous art out there, there's strong uh, expressions, there's a lot of character a lot of things to say so I think we've been it was about time so we take the space with you know you know like we take the space that we need to take because we have a lot to say uh, and, and a lot to offer absolutely uh, let's be more to uh, say here we just have to step aside for one more quick break and then we'll continue the conversation here on face to face with award-winning Enoch you know, singer-songwriter Alyssa B. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is award-winning Enoch singer-songwriter Alyssa P. And Alyssa B., uh, maybe if you could tell us, uh, you know, what music meant for you growing up. I mean, as a kid, uh, my first experience with music, I guess, is in an Anglican church. Uh, every Sunday morning, uh, my parents, my adopted parents, who were older, um, simple life, we'd gather at the church. And I remember just, you know, standing near my father, who had the hymn book in Inuktitut. Um, not, he couldn't read, and that I later found out much later. Um, when I was a little bit, when I was still young, but I realized he's holding something that he can't read. He could sing it a little bit, but it's definitely my mother who was able to read syllabic institute, who I think catch something in my voice or this love I had for music, for singing. So ever since, um, ever since I can remember, I just sang all the time. I, it was almost like something that was able to, uh, it, it was soothing for me. It was almost like a, a nice massage <laughs> in a way because I, I needed it. All I knew is I needed to sing. Uh, I just sang everywhere. I mean, I'd go to the co-op with my father who was a stock boy for over 20 years and I just hang out with him and I was just singing. It was, I was just in my little world. So I realized that I've always had music to 
to guide me, to accompany me. I was very shy also, um, and I think it was a way for me to, yeah, to, 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 bre to reach out a little bit more to the world. So music is definitely my best friend. I mean, yeah, and I never really intended to become a singer. Even the term being a singer is still always a little bit weird because as I think Inuit, uh, when we are creative, I think all human beings are creative. So I think it's just very natural once I, I mean, I used to be on the radio. I used to love doing TV. I was working at social services. All this was very related to what I do now as a, as a singer, just to try to reach people and to communicate to people. Love that. Uh, speaking of communicating to people, you mentioned you're also a filmmaker. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that work? I have put filmmaking on the side for so long because I've been busy on the road. So it's definitely something that I'm ready to really uh, bring back in my life, in my creative life. I'm into documentary filmmaking. Um, so I'm also producing uh, every year now here in Quebec. There was a um, uh, celebration um, on uh, national television here uh, for Indigenous uh, Day. So I decided, I mean, this has to be important for Quebecois people to really get to know our music and also for uh, indigenous people here in Quebec to, to have a place where they can use to celebrate um, uh, on TV, on national TV. So that's also something I, I love doing. Um, I'm so into amazing things right now. I'm also a mother of three, so it's, um, yeah, just trying to use all the forces um, that I have to to create. So yeah, it's it, it's in also filmmaking. I'm working on a project, um, researching right now actually, uh, where I want to talk about and tell the stories of um, people who were born into Hudson Bay Company workers, uh, fathers who, um, because there was a lot of issues in the north and of course in a lot of indigenous communities where Hudson Bay Company would you know have people like my biological father from Newfoundland who went to the north and had a baby with my mother my story is pretty nice it's pretty romantic actually but in a lot of cases uh, a lot of people I know who were born into Hudson Bay Company uh, fathers didn't know their fathers so this is something I really wanted to do for a long time, so I'm finally starting the research part. So it's really exciting and it's pretty scary in a way because these are people's um, realities, so yeah. Absolutely, but uh, really looking forward to that project. Sounds incredible. Uh, Elizabeth, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, again, congrats on all the stuff that you have going on. Sure, it's going to be a big year for you, and appreciate you joining us this week on the show. Nakomeg, thank you so much. And that is all the time we have for the show this week. You can also listen to this episode and past episodes as podcasts. You can find those wherever you download your podcasts. I'm Dennis Ward. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here next week.